You know, this year is a very important year in Barbados. It is the 50th, the year of 50th anniversary of independence. And our government has been telling us that we need to celebrate it in a very significant way. But you know, we are in danger of making our young people believe that we achieved independence by Errol Barrow and a number of politicians in 1966 going to Britain to sit down in, a, in an air-conditioned room and have a conference with the colonial office in Britain and to agree on the independence of Barbados. And if we, if we allow our young people to have that understanding of how we achieve independence, then we will be sending a message that this independence is really a very trivial and not very serious thing. Because anything that is of real substance has to emerge from a process of real struggle and sacrifice. But you know, I, as I look at this year, 2016, I believe that the universal intelligence that governs this world has, is saying to us, look beyond that very trivial idea of independence. Because 2016 is also the year of the 200th anniversary of the Bassa Rebellion of 1816. It is also the year of the 40th anniversary of the Cubana terrorist tragedy of 6 October 1976. So it seems to me that someone is telling us, look, when we are thinking about our independence and nationhood, look beyond that trivializing story of some people going to a conference in England in 1966 and understand that the journey to our, our independence began eight, 200 years ago, in 1816, with that Bassa Rebellion. That Bassa Rebellion, the first of the major 19th century slave rebellions. That Bassa Rebellion, which went on to inspire slave rebellions in Guyana, in Jamaica, that led ultimately to the abolition of slavery in the British Caribbean in 1833. But that Bassa Rebellion was in turn inspired by the earlier Haitian Revolution. Then, so we need to understand that independence didn't come simply from some conference. There was a struggle against slavery in which Barbados played a very important role. Then Cuba comes into the picture. Somebody seems to be telling us, look, in this year of our 50th anniversary, have a look at how we have, how, how Barbados has interacted and interconnected with Cuba. Because every intelligent political analyst in the world will tell you that the litmus test for a true sovereign and independent nation is the Republic of Cuba. It is the most independent and self-respecting nation in the world. This little country, this little Caribbean island, 90 miles away from the United States of America, has stood up to the United States, the mighty United States has said, we are an independent country, we will chart our own course, and Cuba has always refused to bow to any outside big power. So let us, let us recap. Bassa Rebellion led to the abolition of slavery, which is the first step towards nationhood and independence. Then on the 26th of July, 1937, there's a people's uprising surrounding Clement Payne. If we are thinking about what led to the independence of Barbados, that is the major occurrence 
26th of July, 1937. That sets in train all the events that lead up to the independence in 1966. Let us look at Cuba. Where does Cuba independence come from? In addition to their own slave rebellions, 26th of July, 26th of July in Barbados, 1937 in Cuba, 26th of July, 1953, a 26-year-old young lawyer called Fidel Castro pulls together a group of some 200 young men and women. Cuba is under a dictatorship, the Batista dictatorship. It's a military coup. There are no free elections. The people are oppressed. This young leader and these young men and women launch an armed attack on one of the most formidable military barracks in Cuba, the Moncada Barracks. That, that attack ends in disaster. Um, it is defeated. Many of the young people are killed by the soldiers. Fidel Castro himself barely escapes death. He's arrested and he's put in prison. But it is that event that leads on six years later to the triumph of the Cuban Revolution under Fidel Castro in 1959.